yeah so good evening everyone and uh, today is again a very special day for our forum united india indian anthropology forum in fact this is the second invited uh, lecture and today's lecture will be delivered by our esteemed colleague uh, professor vina kumar rivastav director anthropological survey of india and this session will be chaired by professor p c joshi the acting vice chancellor of delhi university and this forum is very young still in its infant stage uh, we celebrated the foundation day of the forum on 31st october and uh, on that same day we also inaugurated uh, our website the website was launched and our two patrons uh, uh, did that favor to us and uh, professor christine hinan from uh, university of charleston delivered a wonderful lecture online lecture indigenous community and uh, you know formal education in a changing world that was the first lecture today is the second lecture and uh, those who are uh, joining this uh, uh, lecture series first time we request them to join also our forum the name of our forum is uh, as i said uh, a minute back united indian anthropology forum and we have a website you can uh, visit our website the website uh, address is uh, anthropologyindiaforum.com i repeat anthropologyindia.com there will there is no gap only after forum there is a gap uh, someone uh, and uh, today's lecture uh, is on multiculturalism and meanwhile i can see professor already joined suprat ji uh, there is some disturbance so maybe you know i shall fail in my duty if i don't extend my heartfelt thanks to my system analyst to my system analyst so uh, engineer suprat kar and uh, our uh, another you know faculty member of sambalpur university engineer engineer atul nag and uh, with this brief introduction you know uh, today is a very special day and uh, I, i request professor grigory to our chair uh, professor pc joshi professor grigory please introduce our chair uh, chair of this webinar professor pc joshi over to you professor grigory on mute professor grigory on mute professor grigory ah uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you can hear me yeah yes yes uh, good evening to all and uh, we are very happy to be here today being the international day for tolerance and endurance uh, in fact it's a very apt day for having a webinar on multiculturalism and this being the second webinar for the forum um, we are we really happy to be here and welcome you all uh, as you know culture is the hallmark of anthropology and multiculturalism is naturally its logical extension the concept of cultural relativism is the unique contribution of anthropology to the peaceful coexistence of global cultures and for sustained human existence in fact uh, if you can quote mahatma gandhi he said i do not want my house to be walled in on all sides and my windows to be stuffed i want the cultures of all the lands to be blown about my house as freely as possible but i refuse to be blown off my feet by any that is the true spirit of anthropological perspective of culture today 16th november being the international day for tolerance and endurance it marks the adoption of the declaration of the principles of tolerance by unesco's member states on 16th november 
in the united nations year of tolerance and marking the 125th birth centenary of mahatma gandhi it is to respect and appreciate the rich variety of world cultures different forms of expression and ways of being human it's a day to learn about respecting rights and beliefs and the cultures and customs of others it's a day to remind us to resolve to fight against all forms of injustice oppression racism and unfair discrimination and to achieve greater unity and harmony through the prevalence of and respect for human rights and multiculturalism it is only appropriate that the united india and the polity forum is organizing its second webinar on multiculturalism on this particular day on the very apt theme multiculturalism by none other than professor vinay kumar srivastava whom we all love to listen to and look for innovative ideas and words of wisdom the webinar is chaired by another stalwart in indian anthropology who prides us all by shouldering the responsibility of chancellor's chancellorship of one of the top most universities in india delhi university in fact professor doshi is one of the vital pillars of our forum who had given impeccable leadership from the beginning along with professor behra in giving proper direction to the forum through his timely advice and appropriate interventions it is my duty to introduce professor doshi who in fact does not require any introduction professor doshi became the 23rd pro vice chancellor of university of delhi by assuming office on 28th june 2020 he has been a professor in the department of anthropology university of delhi his area of specialization is medical anthropology his areas of interest ranges from anthropology of disasters to anthropology of development and on issues related to social exclusion and adverse inclusion professor doshi was delegate of the european union at the united nations framework of climate change conference held at kosna poland in 2008 professor doshi was the first president of the society for indian medical anthropology and the executive member of the ethnographic and folk culture society based in lucknow india he is a life member of the indian anthropological association and a life fellow of the indian association of social science theatre he is the editor of the society for medical anthropology bulletin on 28th october 2020 president of india who is the visitor of university of delhi as a suspended incumbent vice chancellor professor yogesh kumar tyagi and director director professor pc joshi to assume office of acting vice chancellor of the university of delhi forthwith till further arrangements he has to his credit very many awards and honors he was a recipient in 1987 of the indira priyadarshini priksha vitram national award as a founder member of friends of trees and the inter university center associateship award <laughs> in humanities <laughs> and social sciences 1996 99 certificate of honor at the first friends india meet on psychiatry psychoanalysis and psychotherapy in 2007 He also has the, the distinction of discovering a Paleolithic site in Delhi in 1983. He has, to his credit, number of publications. He has co-authored nine books, nearly 160 articles, book chapters, and reviews in areas such as medical anthropology, traditional medicine, shamanism, impact of disasters, lifestyle diseases, and antibiotic resistance, etc. He has worked on many research projects and submitted over 14 research reports. to various funding agencies and government policy planning agencies he has worked in interdisciplinary areas with the psychiatrists psychologists epidemiologists and other researchers on various topics and co-authored many papers his papers have appeared in the journals such as world development indian journal of pharmacology man in india american journal of ortho 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 psychiatry indian journal of medical research Journal of Clinical Pharmacy and Therapeutics and National Medical Journal of India. Um, finally, but not the least, we are proud to have Professor Joshi as the chairperson of the Academic and Expansion Standing Committee <coughs> of the forum. And we can be sure that under the able leadership of Professor Joshi, 
Indian anthropology would receive a new lease of life in its academic orientation and wider recognition as a scientific discipline. We are grateful to Professor Joshi for having accepted this responsibility of chairing today's webinar. And I wholeheartedly welcome on behalf of the forum to, the, today's, to chair today's proceedings. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Gregory, for introducing Professor Joshi, the acting vice chancellor of Delhi University, and also giving brief introduction of the background of the webinar. Now, Professor Joshi, it's your turn. And the Google Meet platform is <coughs> yours. Professor Joshi. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Behra and Professor Gregory. It's a great honor to chair this webinar, which is on a very, very important theme of international relevance. Multiculturalism actually did not originate in anthropology, but anthropology, like Professor Gregory very rightly said from the very beginning, was championing the cause of cultural relativism. And multiculturalism, of course, is included in that. And now that the xenophobic you know, forces are rising all over the world, in such a scenario, I think talking about multiculturalism from anthropological perspective is, I think, very apt and very relevant. And especially since we are celebrating International Day of Tolerance. Now, there are two things that I have to do. I have to introduce our great scholar, Professor Vinay Kumar whom I know since 1972. And since 1972, I see that the spark that I saw when I was a student is still continuing in Professor Srivastava. And with the coming time, the maturity in his scholarship is increasing day by day. Professor Srivastava has a distinction of receiving gold medal in anthropology, but also receiving gold medal in sociology from University of Delhi, which is a rare, rare distinction. Plus, he did his MPhil in Chinese studies department, where he got O grade. So he is some, he's a scholar par excellence. He was a student par excellence. And that is reflected. You know, I don't have to say, uh, I have to say in words, that is reflected in his scholarship. Today, he has chosen to speak on a subject which is not much taken up in anthropology. But I think it's a very important, multicultural is a very important topic. You have seen what happened in, even during the COVID times, what happened in, in America. So many agitations that people went into. I think the spirit of tolerance was at at, there was a threat to the spirit of tolerance in America. There is a threat to spirit of tolerance everywhere in the world. In such a situation, to analyze, to debate, to discuss, and to come out with some kind of meaningful conclusions with respect to multiculturalism is, I think, very, very appropriate. And who else than Professor Vinay Kumar Srivastava give a lecture on this particular topic? In India, you know, you must have heard of uh, this term Vasudev Kutambakam. Now, Vasudev Kutambakam, if you go through the whole shloka, it talks of two types of people. It talks of people who are narrow-minded people, the Laguchetasam people, and it talks people who are broad-minded people, who are magnanimous, Udar Charitam. Now it says that for the people who are narrow-minded, there exists this and that, the differences. But those who are magnanimous, those who are people with broad mind, the whole world is a family. I think that is a great idea that we have. India is a country where from the very beginning, from the very beginning, from the very, very ancient time, I think multi multiculturalism was in practice. Caste system is nothing but a particular form of multiculturalism. In fact, you go to when a child is born in Indian villages or in the cities, the child is always, you know, always witnessing these diversities. And therefore, if there is something called diversity tolerance index, you know, if we can have something called diversity tolerance index, 
I think India would fare at the top of it. India would fare at the top of diversity tolerance index because we in India are very very sensitive to. We are very very accommodative to the differences. Look at America. You know, like I, I would like to take you to America. Just after nine eleven, what happens? They started bashing. They started beating Sardarjis. So they could not know. They could not differentiate between the turban of an Arabian Arabian person and turban of a Sikh. For them, turban means the same thing. In India, I don't think this kind of a mistake anybody would come because we are so sensitive to. And when we go, when we go to pilgrimage, this diversity of India is fully reflected in in the scenario where different people from different subcultures of Hinduism come together. And celebrate. I think they celebrate not the kumbh only. They celebrate the festival of diversity. They celebrate the festival of differences. That happens in India every twelve years. That happens in India in every fair. That happens in India in every celebrations. So we are from this celebrated country where multiculturalism is in our genes. And I think the world has to learn a lot from us. But my job is not here to give a lecture. It is the prerogative of Professor Vinay Kumar Srivastava. I feel very proud to invite him to enlighten us with his views on multiculturalism. Professor Vinay Kumar Srivastava. Uh, good evening to all of you. My regards and my best wishes to all of you. Professor P.C. Joshi, the chairperson of uh, today's session. Professor Behra, my teachers, my colleagues, my friends, and my students. I am really honored to have been invited to give this lecture. And uh, I did not choose the topic. The topic was just given to me. And I thought that sometimes you have to be enterprising. And so why not speak on this? Multiculturalism has been very dear to, to me. And I immediately clinched the topic. Although Professor Behra asked me to give a specific topic. And I said, perhaps when I would be lecturing, the topic will funnel down. I really do not know what I would speak. And I will try to funnel down my knowledge and say a few words. I have been given an hour. So I would finish at uh, 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 7.48. I'm starting at 6.48, I'll finish by 7.48. And then I am uh, I will be available for any number of, uh, of questions. You see, I, I read the book which Franz Boas wrote in 1914, The Mind of a Primitive Man. And I think that that book should be the first in the bibliography on multiculturalism. Anthropologists are, are very interesting people. They do many things. They do not want to take any credit for, for that. I also read an article by, by Rose Berry sometime published in 1992, where he says that anthropologists are accustomed to public invisibility. I'm quoting him. Anthropologists are accustomed to public invisibility. The books, the books and the articles we write, they generally do not make a dent on the larger public, primarily because the larger public is not really interested in what anthropologists do and the kind of societies the anthropologists study. 
then what happens this is a little uh, request to uh, to my friends who are listening to me that please do not send any questions because the questions come on the screen and i start reading them and there's every probability that i would run astray so my very humble request is that please do not and please no accolades no words of praise i know who i am and i also know i also know what i have to say so this is my humble uh, request on the day of international day of tolerance and endurance so Roseberry says it's a very interesting article on it. Actually, is on uh, multiculturalism. But Roseberry says that uh, that seldom these societies about which we talk, the societies on which we write, they enter into public consciousness. Further, he says that anthropologists are so shy that they do not want to enter into. the ranks of power they are happy in their own little words and they are as happy as the tribal people are whom they study wonderful it's a wonderful account and wonderful caricature of the anthropologists of course exceptions are always uh, always there so what happens is that when the here i am bringing Claude Levi Strauss and the last book of Levi Strauss, which was in fact a set of lectures he delivered in Japan on anthropology and modern society, where Levi Strauss says that the Western scholars they turn to anthropological scholarship. they turn to anthropological writing when they start sensing when they start feeling hollowness of their epistemology hollowness of their theoretical perspective hollowness of their understanding and then the thing now the best way is to look at the anthropological writing and he gives umpteen number of example to show how anthropological writings are becoming <clears throat> very popular with the, the people from other discipline and this would also partly explain why a large number of ethnographic accounts which were done sometimes in the 1920s or 1930s they are being reprinted it's not that the anthropologists are running after them these accounts are being read by the non anthropologists i have always maintained that anthropology stream may be drying up in the departments of anthropology but anthropology is alive it is being appropriated profitably it is being appropriated fruitfully by other disciplines now on this day of uh, tolerance and endurance or endurance and 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 tolerance you know we are generally advised to acquire the values of tolerance we are generally advised to cultivate the values of tolerance as if this is a distinct value which doesn't come to us with our socialization and therefore we have to artificially rather look for these values and try to cultivate in ourselves and also transmit this values to our own children our posterity i have a different point of view and i will not elaborate this because this would mean a full lecture and i have written a lot on this i think that if you are a student of anthropology and if you have been closely reading the anthropological accounts the concomitant process is that we become by doing anthropology by reading anthropology by being wedded to anthropology we become tolerant we become syncretic we become pluralist 
we start enduring everything. Suffering has a different meaning for us. Now, this is not only my discovery, although for many years I thought this is what I have discovered after studying my own student. I taught at the University of Delhi for close to 19 years because I taught, in fact, for a total number of 41 years and three months, but nine years I spent in uh, Hindu college teaching sociology, another two years, again in Hindu college teaching sociology. And for almost six years, I was on a leave from the university. And so whichever time was left, I served the Department of Anthropology. And every year I studied my own student from the point of view of the impact of, on, of anthropology on them. And I have written all these empirical accounts in my articles, the impact of anthropology. And I think that uh, the concomitant process of reading anthropology is that we become very pluralistic. We become very tolerant. We start appreciating diversity. There's no need for us to artificially cultivate this value in us. It comes to us when we read about different people and people who are so distinct, people who are who are belonging to a different kind of a social system. I remember, and someday I'm going to write on this, that what I felt when I spent a full day with the Jarva in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. And I remember the kind of feeling I had when I was I was with them, with them and I started questioning, or rather problematizing <coughs> the concept of, of the other. So, anthropology comes to us as a virtue. It comes to us as a jewel. And I'm very proud to be an anthropologist. And I wish that this forum, which has been, which has been founded by Professor Deepak Vera and also his, his colleague, this forum becomes the mouthpiece, the spokesperson of Indian anthropology all over the, the world. Now, it's a great thing <coughs> that now we have taken up, taken up the task of promoting anthropological work, anthropological thoughts. And when we look at the contribution of anthropologists to this concept called multiculturalism, and I certainly will not go into the distinction between what a plural society is, what diversity is, what coexistence is. Each of these words mean a different, uh, different thing. Like many people would call the caste society a plural society rather than caste society as multicultural culture society. Now, these are the different opinions, which certainly I'm not going to going to take up here. These are very elementary things. I will only try to raise some of the important questions. And also, I would conclude with what is called everyday multiculturalism, something where anthropologists can truly accept. So when we look at the anthropological contributions to this concept, although if my memory is correct, this concept of multiculturalism as as Thomas Highland Erickson tells us in one of his papers that this was in 1957 that an article was published on Switzerland in English language in which the term multiculturalism was used for the first time. Then we also learn that in Canada in the 1970s, the instrument of political governance was multiculturalism. And therefore, if you want to know about the theoretical aspects of multiculturalism, you have to look into the writings of the Canadian scholars. And I think we cannot proceed further in terms of our theoretical understanding unless we know what these people had said about about linguistic diversity, about cultural diversity, about ethnic diversity in Canada. And also the fact that a large number of signboards and the traffic signs are written in Gurmukhi, 
in, in Canada. Now, this kind of a thing cannot be understand, understood unless we look into the way political governance was carried out in, in Canada. So, the concept has become now an important thing, but it does not mean that it was absent in the discipline of anthropology. In fact, I would venture on to say that the more I read anthropology, I find that many of the ideas which have now become very prominent and are being overwhelmingly used, these ideas were somewhere or the other hidden in the anthropological writing. And these anthropological writings have been publicly invisible as the anthropologists have been publicly invisible. I'm only lending support to William Roseberry's, Roseberry's work. So when we look at all these writings, we find some of the important conclusion of these anthropologists were the following. The first was, diversity is ubiquitous diversity is universal in every society we find the element of diversity there are different cultures the second point that there are similarities and differences between between cultures and these differences and similarities they are to be understood and these differences and similarities <coughs> have to be studied as closely as possible. Number three, that culture is a meaningful whole. Cultures are equal but different. You will come across this statement again and again. Cultures are equal, but they are different. <coughs> right from the time of, of uh, you can say, the Harder, the famous German philosopher, Johann Harder, to, to Ranke, you know, the, the another scholar, you find that history was seen as combining discrete cultures, knowledge about discrete culture. And each culture was regarded as having its own spirit, for which the term folks geist was used, or national geist, <coughs> which actually means which actually means the spirit of the of the culture. This was used for for that. And the important point from Harder to Ranke was that each culture has its own notion of happiness. Each culture has its notion of what meaningful activities are. Therefore, culture is a meaningful whole. Now, our job, the fourth statement, our job is to understand these differences. Our job certainly is not to our job certainly is not to explore and appreciate these differences. Look at the difference. Look at the distinction. That number one, our job as anthropologists is to understand these differences between cultures. It doesn't mean that we start extolling them. It doesn't mean that we start admiring the, these differences. On the contrary, what we anthropologists do is that. Yeah, so our job is is to learn from these different different cultures. And we should be prepared to learn from these cultures with exemplary humility because each culture has something to to teach us and and when we are prepared to learn from the cultures with great humility it does not mean that we are a muted lot we are looking at the culture in a critical way incidentally i'll add a footnote here that there's a concept called critical multiculturalism where we are looking at each culture with a critical eye. If certain practices are going on, these practices which are against the spirit 
of uh, human rights or these cultures are against the spirit of humanity in general, then perhaps we have to pick up a dialogue with the people to think in terms of bringing about a change in their, in their, in their practices. So, so we find here that that different kinds of cultures are coexisting. Not only that the cultures are coexisting, but practices for one culture are being adopted by the other culture. This is the dynamism of the culture, some kind of a cultural cultural appurtenances, the cultural repertoire, they keep on increasing. It will be an interesting thing to study how, how Santa Claus and Christmas, they have become a part of the Christmas tree. They have become a part of our cultural appurtenances, a ritual complex. And I saw in my little study, which I did on Maharam, in, in Lucknow, I found that a large number of families, which happened to be Hindu, they brought their own little tazias, and these tazias were also buried in Karbala. This is in Lucknow, and this is something which I studied, and it really surprised me that how, how different kinds of cultural practices are appropriated, and they become a part of the culture, how the cultures keep on evolving. So there are processes which are going on their own. We take a lot of pride in the concept of cultural relativism. I think if we do not have recourse to this idea, perhaps we would not be able to understand the work of Franz Boas or the work of Ruth Benedict or the work of Margaret Reed and a large number of other people. Now, if I, if I, uh, you know, uh, refer to, to, to George Foster's paper, he says that anthropology has given to the world of knowledge three things. And the first is cultural relativism, second is field work, and third is comparative method. Now, this is Foster's point of view. So certainly, cultural relativism has come to us. But this concept has to be explained as clearly as possible to the wider world. Because often what happens is that cultural relativism, ethical relativism is often confused with what is called cultural justification. And this is a dangerous thing. If suppose I'm writing an article on the Dani community in, uh, in Indonesia, and they have the practice of finger chopping, the finger is chopped whenever someone dies because they believe, the Dani believe that if they chop a little portion of their finger, then the spirit of the dead will not be able to harm them. The spirit of the dead will not be hovering over them. Now, this, if I'm explaining this, if I'm explaining this kind of a of a practice, it does not mean that I am lending justification to, to, to this. Anthropologists are often misunderstood, and they are misunderstood primarily because of this, that we do not make our point very clear. And this is, again, a point which needs to be taken into account, especially by forums like yours, that how anthropology is often misunderstood outside the the domains of, uh, of, of, of anthropology in, in other departments and how they, they, they look at it. So the, the concepts which have come, whether it's a concept of plural society or the concept of diversity or multiculturalism, or other kinds of concepts, they have to be closely examined. I personally think that what we anthropologists should do should do is that first of all we should look at our contribution to the concept the term may or may not be there that's a different thing the term may not be there because i told you that if i have to begin with multiculturalism i'll begin with franz boas i will not begin with the article which was written in 1957 to which Erickson is referring. I'll begin, begin with him. I will look at into my own scholarship. In fact, you know, some of the Indian scholars have made significant contribution to this. They happen to be political scientists, but political scientists who are anthropologically inspired. Gurpreet Mahajan is one. 
Vico Parik is, uh, is, is another one. And there's an Italian scholar like Enzo Colombo, whose work I have really admired. And then, then there are other people, you know, who have contributed to this. So my first submission is that anthropological ideas are there and we have to examine these anthropological notwithstanding the fact whether the term was used and was not used we can trace trace multiculturalism to the ethnically and culturally complex societies of historical time of proto-historical time but now this concept has become a cogent one it is something under which we are trying to understand the second thing we should do is look at the kind of contribution which others are making to this and the others are making contribution to this from their respective vantage point and just look at how they have developed the the concept and i have learned a lot say for example the concept of tribe i have learned a lot looking at the work of say for example romila thapar they also write on on tribe or say for example people who have written in medieval indian history that what they understand by this, our understanding and their understanding has to be juxtaposed. And that is how the knowledge will, will grow. And this is what is interdisciplinarity. So when I look at the work which we have done as anthropologists and the work which the others have done, I find that, that multiculturalism is understood in two, two ways. Number one, it is understood, it is understood as a descriptive term, as a, a term which actually tells us about the society. So we say Canada is a multicultural society. Or as Professor P.C. Joshi said, India is a multicultural society. And you can take some examples. You can always make a a, a typology, some societies which are heavily multicultural and some societies which are less multicultural, depending upon the number of communities they have. So multiculturalism is a descriptive, uh, descriptive term. And the second meaning is that it is a, it is a normative ideal. It is a policy. Multiculturalism is a policy. And therefore, many authors who write on this, they say multiculturalism is a polysemous term, polysemic, having many meanings you can, you can find. Suppose you start deconstructing the second one, the, the normative uh, ideal, okay, as a policy. You come across in the literature, and I'm referring not only to the literature of the anthropologists, but also the literature produced by other disciplinarians, that multiculturalism is an ethic. It is an ideology. It is a standpoint. It is an epistemology. Now, then you also come across multiculturalism is a positive evaluation of diversity. Multiculturalism is a way of learning from the diversity. Now, this point comes up in Gurpreet Mahajan's work that multiculturalism is a way to learn from this diversity and reflect upon this. So I learn about the other culture. I reflect on my own culture. And thus, thus, for me, it is a learning experience. And I may even think of bringing about a change in my culture by looking at the other culture. So, so multiculturalism is, is the soul, is the most vibrant uh, principle. You also come across, uh, across a statement like multiculturalism is a project, is an agenda of unity. It is a balance between diversity. It is a non-Darwinian solution. This is very interesting non-Darwinian solution, rather than people being eliminated, survival of the fittest, what it does is it tries to bring all of them together. So it is a commitment to the preservation. It's a commitment to the preservation of the diversity. And therefore, it is the most, most 
valued thing. In fact, I would quote Gurpreet Mahajan, who say that it is one of the valued goods. Multiculturalism is a valued, valued good. And, and the state has to think in terms of this. The people have to think in terms of this. Communities have to think in terms of, of this. Surely, there can be many contradictions which come across. Many, you know, the word which is used here is aporias. Aporias in, in this, the logical contradictions which are, which are there. Because it is concerned with, it is concerned with identity politics. Multiculturalism concerned with identity politics. It is concerned with the politics of difference. One community differentiating itself from the other community and trying to keep the differences alive. And I was really, really interested in finding out how the young tribal student who are working in anthropology or in other social science disciplines, they want to read what all was written about them and on them in the anthropological literature so that they can think in terms of creating a culture which was present at one point in, in time trying to understand this kind of a thing, how we are different from the other. Then it is concerned with what, uh, what uh, uh, you know, uh, um, what uh, Charles Taylor, or what uh, uh, um, Hegel, you know, uh, George Hegel, what they called politics of re recognition, how one group is recognized in comparison to the other thing, and how this as an agenda, multiculturalism is to combat the disrespectful identities which have been created, where communities are pitted against the other, and some communities are treated rather dis, disrespectfully. So it is uh, it is concerned with the with the, a kind of philosophy. And this is the second thing, normative thing. And we anthropologists are concerned with both these aspects. We are concerned with the, what is called the descriptive category, what it is there in society, finding out how many religions are there. Now, this will be really interesting how the next census is going to be shaped. Because as you know, that tribal religion and Sarna, they are perhaps are going to be added to the category of tribal religion. How our understanding, how our typology of the culture is going to change over a length of time. And in fact, when I read about, uh, about these things in the newspaper, about this thing, I could easily connect it with the, the anthropological writing. Martin Orans wrote on the Santaj. Christoph von Führer Hammondorf wrote on the on the changes and you know the, the how people are looking at their own religion religion as different from the the other so so multiculturalism are concerned with a whole lot of issues it is essentially concerned with the cultural rights of people it is concerned with the group based cultural rights of people and these are the pertinent um, pertinent category the major question here has been has been how to reconcile diversity with social solidarity that's the major question diversity and social solidarity in nation building this question comes up in a very very big big way so so we find that that we we can perhaps think, and this is a purely anthropological point of view, we can think in terms of a continuum. And one end of the continuum is what may be called assimilationism, where, where the community is supposed to merge in the other community, lose its identity altogether, become a part of that identity. And on the other hand is a congregation of different kinds of culture and each culture claiming its own unique name. What is sometimes called in literature difference multiculturalism. 
So you have these two categories. One, the assimilationism, and the other is what is called multi diff you know, the difference multiculturalism. And in between this, you can place various types of multiculturalism, various types of uh, this multiculturalism. In fact, I'm I'm quite interested in looking at the typology of multiculturalism. And, and and this can be a good research topic, how this typology has evolved. For example, Stuart Hall speaks of six types of multiculturalism. Stephen Vartovic writes about eight types of, of uh, uh, multiculturalism. Delenti writes about nine types of multiculturalism. And they are all between this kind of a, of a continuum because if there is a concept called multiculturalism and if we refi the concept, then you come to what is called the multicultural society. And each multicultural society is shaped by political factors, by its societal factor, by its historical factor. And that is the reason why we all speak of we all speak of multiculturalism in plural. So you will come across the terms like multiculturalisms. So there are many varieties of multiculturalism and they each multiculturalism has to be related in the context of its own, own culture. Now then we ask here, proceeding or going further with this agenda, multiculturalism as an agenda, agenda, what are the aims? And the aims can be easily delineated. In a pedagogical fashion, one can say the aims are that to maintain the distinctive cultural identities and the practices of the minority. That's the first thing. And needless to say here that minorities are not defined in terms of the demography. Minorities are defined in terms of the relations of power, people who are who are inferior, they are supposed to be kept in the category called minority. So, so that minorities can maintain their distinctive cultural identities, their distinctive practices. The second is concerning the integration of the immigrants, those who must be given a fairer treatment in this. Number three, the whole category of the marginalized people, whether they are African-American or those who are having different sexual preferences, the LGBTQ or those who are disabled. So therefore, in order to understand this thing, we'll have to go to the concepts of, of exclusion and, and inclusion. So these are the the aim and how to have some kind of a nation where all these are are involved. Now there are two basic uh, you know lines of thought here. The first line of thought is is and uh, and uh, this is where once again you know the Indian scholars have made an important contribution. So the Chandran Kokathas Kokathas. Now he is uh, he's in Australia. He says that minority groups should be tolerated and the state should leave them free without any kind of interference. Let them survive, let them build on their own. The other, other view which comes primarily from the experience of Canadian society is that uh, that these minority groups should be positively accommodated. So there should be a term which was which was popularized by Will Will, you know, Kimlika, who is a Canadian scholar. It is that they should be group differentiated rights, group differentiated rights, so that the group can have the right of social, you know, determination. So these kinds of rights are important, important here. Some people have tried to understand it in terms of the theory of acculturation. And one of the finest contributions here is by, by John Berry. And uh, he has uh, given a four cell typology 
looking in terms of in terms of, I try to present it in some kind of uh, I mean I can just show it to you I don't have any transparency something like this a kind of four cell typology where and I find it very useful because it is very anthropological the whole approach is very anthropological because what he says is that we can have two parameters to build up the typology and here in this and that is why I am approving of this idea and I think that this may, needs to be furthered is, is that we have two parameters here. The first is the cultural maintenance that maintaining one's own heritage, one's own cultures, one's own set of idea and the other is having contact with the others having contact with the other other communities in the intercultural context. So we have two variables here in this model of acculturation. The first variable is the cultural maintenance and the other variable is intercultural contact. So if the cultural maintenance is very strong, we are making our cultures continue. And also, our contact is very strong. We have both these things very strong. Our contact with the wider world is very strong, and we are maintaining our culture very, very well. It is a case of integration. But when culture maintenance is very strong, but, but the contact is weak, it is a case of separation. And then we, when we have cultural maintenance, which is weak, but integration is very strong, it is a case of assimilation. And finally, when cultural maintenance is weak and contact is also weak, then it is a case of, of marginalization. Now, this is related with the other categories also. So what is multiculturalism? Multiculturalism ideally would apply to the first situation where the culture is maintaining itself, is maintaining its heritage, and at the same time, it is fully integrated. And if you look at this model, then you find perhaps when we talk about the idea of mainstreaming tribal societies, uh, then perhaps this is the idea which comes here, that the tribals have their own cultural, own cultural aspect. They should continue with their culture. They should continue with their heritage. And they should take pride in their, in their heritage. If first is the case of culture, multiculturalism, the second is the case of segregation. The third is the case of melting pot melting pot, a concept which, as you know, was used in a play in 1908. And since then, this concept has, has remained, which is a case of assimilation. And finally, it is a case of exclusion, which, uh, which, which, which comes up. Now, here comes, you know, what is called the a critical understanding of, of uh, multiculturalism. If we think <laughs> on the one hand, <clears throat> that multiculturalism is a concept on which everyone is trying to write. Then there are those who are critical of multiculturalism. And they say, they say that, yes, at one time, very, we were very proud of being multiculturalists. In fact, in 1997, Nathan Glazer published a book which was titled, We Are All Multiculturalists Now. We are all multiculturalists now, and therefore, therefore, you know, we are very different from what our ancestors were. But, but by the close of the millennium, last millennium, we started talking about the scholars started talking about the retreat from multiculturalism, some kind of a, of a going away from this. And some people went to the extent of arguing that multiculturalism was nothing but a failure. It was a failure. It was fostering a kind of social cleavages, social fragmentation. 
it were it was leading to the existence of parallel lives it was also giving rise to these terrorist groups and therefore how far multiculturalism is a uh, is is to be appreciated is to be carried forward was questioned and there were incidents and actually these incidents need to be studied you know one of the things which anthropology has given us is what is called the case study the case study method and i think i think it's a very important thing professor joshi talked about the covid the case studies of the covid tell us very clearly that how how covid was being socially constructed by different communities and how the relations between different communities were rather restrained because of of that so these case studies tell us a lot now say for example the urban riots which took place is very simple example that if you take the riots which took place riots which took place in oldham which is uh, part of manchester in 2001 take the case study and this was a riot in which the local youth had uh, scrimmages had violence with the and the conflicts with the south asian groups and what happened you know in this case was was that the riots came up and immediately after this you look at the kind of narratives and the kind of discourses which are built up this is the typical anthropological method that what happens how this right for example the the cronulla beach riot which took place in australia in 2005 how the case study of this riot how this actually gave rise to a kind of discourse in which we started questioning the policies of the state with respect to multiculturalism and we started having the negative opinion when professor joshi was talking about covid-19 and he gave the example of the united states of america what he was having in mind was precisely this idea that how the asians how the chinese were looked at in uh, in america how how in india at least you know i counted at least 22 cases were registered where the students from the northeastern part of india were stigmatized and foul words were used for them which certainly i would not like to use here that how you know the entire discourse the entire narrative chain the agenda of some kind of a peaceful living the peaceful coexistence this agenda starts breaking breaking down and this happens you know when suppose someone is murdered like you know one of the uh, uh, filmmakers from uh, netherland you know uh, thao van go he was murdered and uh, someone who happened to be an outsider an immigrant belonging to a particular religious community was involved the kind of uh, the kind of discourse which was built up was very different so how you know the the whole project of uh, of multiculturalism how it receives a setback and so the minority groups the the immigrants they are viewed differently and the the conservative right wing scholars have different kinds of thing and they say that by protecting these communities what we are doing is that we are giving rise to a kind of fragmentation now there are three things which i find very interesting and the first is the criticism which has come from the feminists of multiculturalism now this is very interesting and i think i think that uh, all feminist scholars must pay attention to this that uh, uh, that feminist reaction to multiculturalism and one of the the important contributions here is by a, by a scholar called susan oken now this was in 1999 that she she said that there is a contraposition between multiculturalism and the women's rights her argument was that multiculturalism now the three things about which i am going to talk first is feminism now her argument was that 
multiculturalism protects those communities which are already highly stratified these communities have a different kind of an orientation with respect to people these communities do not accept that people are are having equal rights or people should have equal rights they endorse the practices that severely penalize some groups within the community women receive unfair treatment in these communities the migrant groups migrant groups are strongly patriarchal how migration affects she argued how migration affects men and women has to be studied and it is quite common and you can have umpteen examples that when women become the consuming members they do not remain the producing members there is always a probability that they will lose in terms of their status and one of the thing which has been pointed out again and again by a number of scholars who have been, who have been working on tribal communities they say that the tribes are becoming more and more patriarchal now this morning uh, you read about the the sex ratio sex ratio in different states of the country and you find that in many of the tribal communities the sex ratio which has uh -huh. be more women than men in many cases it has gone down and it points toward the rise of patriarchy in these societies susan okens argument was that that uh, that in these kinds of societies you know the practices which are highly unequal these practices oppressive practices they continue the oppressive gendered practices continue there's a lot of literature on female genital mutilation lot of literature on polygyny lot of literature on wearing of the head scarves lot of literature on how the 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 advancement of women how the careers of women is adversely affected in these kinds of of communities and what we have to remember here that these practices for example fgm female genital mutilation sometimes we think it is being practiced in the rural communities it is being practiced in the tribal communities of africa not really it goes on even in the urban context now you can take examples from indian society as well and this is in the name of culture their own right in the same way polygyny in the same way say for example control over women's bodies all these things are interpreted in this in this manner or or say for example putting a stop to the women's career but all these things you know they are cruel practices to say the least and they undermine the sexual health of women they undermine the 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 career chances and make women subservient and therefore if these communities rights are are protected then there is every probability that all these things will will continue and some of these practices are highly disrespectful to women i find this argument quite powerful although like other other kinds of thing many anthropologists have criticized it and they say that what okin and others who promote these ideas they take is they are subscribing to the essentialist view of of culture and they are not trying to understand it from their point of view the other scholars say that look 
oh, one can yeah. understand many of these practices. One can understand many of these practices in the context of the culture. This is something which actually needs your a little attention. May I request uh, uh, Shri Bhagwan Royji, please mute your mic. A lot of disturbances being created. So, so what we find is, what we find is that that many of these practices have to be understood in the context. And surely we should not follow the essentialist and the Puritan view of culture. But there are certain practices which are not withstanding the culture. They are essentially disrespectful. And FGM is one of them. Uh, and, and, you know, withdrawing you know, uh, girls from the college or from the school, not allowing them to pursue their career. This is something which is disrespectful. And therefore, we have to negotiate this with the community. The second thing, again, I find that this area is another one on which not, not much work exists. And this is about children, about children, multiculturalism and, 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 and children. Uh, uh, of course, there are people who have contributed to feminism. There are people who have contributed to the effect of or the impact of multiculturalism on this or, or preserving the minority rights of people on women. But what about children? This area has remained ignored. Deepa Bhairasam knows it very well. The children have always been ignored and we have been arguing that there should be a pediatric anthropology concerned with this, how the children create their own, own world. Whatever little literature is available, it says that in many communities, children are subjected to physical and psychological abuse. And some of these practices are, are innately harmful for, for children. There is a practice of shunning. There's a practice of ostracization. If the child is not subscribing to the values which are laid down, the children are scarified. Scars are made on their on their body. And needless to tell you how children have been used in the sports. For example, the camel running sport. So, so you find that children have also suffered when the rights of the communities are are uh, are protected because children are not uh, protected in the same way in all the the communities and children are uh, are removed from the school the the not educated and of course you know that in some cases you know this may be gender gender based and we have to understand once again we have to understand here that the importance of schooling you know, in the overall development of the of the child, once the communities are subscribing to certain kinds of things where children are not truly valued the way they should be valued, certainly multiculturalism is to be blamed. Like in the case of feminism, here also, here also people say that it is uh, uh, an essentialist view, it does not take into account cultural relativism. Now, this is the view put forth by an Indian scholar, Mukherjee, who says that this is a different kind of a view where we are not understanding the children in the context of those cultures. Now, the third thing, but as I told you, that it requires more work, looking at how children have been impacted because of multicultural policy. The third thing, which actually... Actually, I am really interested in, in this. And I think the Canadian scholar whose work I quoted, Will Kimlika, he has been a great uh, uh, animal rights supporter. And he claims to be a vegetarian for the last 20 years or, or so. And the third area, which needs to be, as anthropologists, we cannot ignore it, is the impact of, med of multiculturalism on animals and uh, and uh, whichever studies are available particularly will kimlika's study they say that uh, the multicultural practices have had perverse effect on the non-human 
sentient animals. Now, the word used is sentient animal, those which have feeling, those who have the central nervous system and have uh, feeling. So, what are the interests of the animals? We have never thought about this. The interests of the animals. The interests of the animals is that they don't want sufferings to be inflicted upon them. Number one. Number two, now we are thinking like animals. Hmm? Number two, they, they do not want a kind of what is called negative freedom to put them in cages, to put them in zoological gardens. No, they don't want. They want to be free. They want to be absolutely free and liberated. Number three, that these, these, you know, sentient animals also want that their their well-being should be well-being should be should be taken into consideration. If they are ill, then some kind of medicine should be provided to them. All want good health. Animals also want uh, want good health, and uh, they don't want to be malnourished. They don't want to have. Uh, have uh, uh, an emaciated existence. Now, this we are thinking as animals. Now, many of the practices of uh, the communities they may be they may be detrimental to the animal. Especially, it may be the way they are slaughtered. It may be the way they are treated or just left as as they are. Now, in addition to these three things, on which you know one must. Uh, one must uh, do some little more work. The impact of this, this one interest of mine, hmm, in which I am, I am quite involved, is the is the impact of multiculturalism on the dead. Today we talk about the rights of the dead, and especially in the COVID times, uh, how dead have been treated, how the the funeral rituals were highly abbreviated. What happened to all this? How the communities construct uh, death and the death? This is also an important, important area. So looking at this, and all these apply to the anthropological work. And in the last one minute I have at my, my disposal, we talk about what is called the Multicultural Policy Index. It was created by Keith, Benting to compare these different countries with respect to the index. And the important finding of this study was, which I think was very good, was that irrespective of the kind of narratives which were built up after the the cases of violence, the cases of uh, disturbance came up, the communities' uh, scrimmages and fights came up. Uh, we thought that multiculturalism as a project is failing. But it's a quantitative study done by Benting and others. And this is a 2013 study, very easily available, very quantitative kind of a work with reference to eight indices. They have tried to compare 21 countries of the world which have democracy. And they have found that, in fact, in fact, contrary to what we thought, after these narratives were built up, the narratives which try to defy multiculturalism, we find that multiculturalism as a project is still adhered to. On the other hand, many of the nations have added more policies in their agenda to continue with this, to protect the rights of the minorities, to protect the rights of women, to protect the rights of the immigrant, to protect the rights of the other people, particularly the disabled people and, um, and, and others. So it is not on decline. The last which I think has remained rather unstudied, to the extent it should have been studied, is what we call everyday multiculturalism. I think that this word came into our vocabulary in 2009 when um, Amanda Will and uh, Selvaraj Velotham Velayutham, Velayutham wrote a paper which was titled Everyday Multiculturalism. And Ash Amin, you know, around the same time, published an article on what is called Everyday Urban. 
that was a term every day I run. Now, this uh, was basically the how people in a given situation, how they interact with, with people in the other community, with the people in the other community. If the interactions are temporary, are for a short period of time, what is the nature? What is its nature? What is the assertion of culture? And when the interactions are rather permanent, hmm, then what will be the the kind of multiculturalism which will come. This everyday multiculturalism is actually concerned with how people produce, reproduce, how they transform the world around them, how they interact, interact with others. And for this, I think the anthropologists armed with techniques like, like qualitative research methodology and approaches like ethno methodology ethno science and uh, and others they would be able to understand how multiculturalism is actually operating at the at the local level how people are actually looking at this so we would be studying interactions interactions of people okay people from different communities and looking at how interaction and culture the play of culture putting culture into into action how these things these things come and this is a very important distinction which i which i said i'm developing this idea interaction which is for a short period of time hmm? suppose my friend invites me invites me you know to to partake the feast feast on a particular particular religious function and i go and i partake that feast what is the display of my culture there but suppose i marry someone who is from a different community okay then how in that kind of interaction which is persisting, which is enduring, which we call permanent, what kind of cultural play would be there? The essential point, as Professor Gregory said in the beginning, Professor Joshi supported this idea, is that, that culture is always in flux. Culture is always being made, remade, constructed, and deconstructed. And and none other than the anthropologists will be able to find out. These are the different facets of multiculturalism. But we have to remember that multiculturalism, as I said in the beginning, is a description, is an empirical account of the society, is also a normative principle, is also an agenda, and where it has a diversity of meaning and none other than the anthropologists are most suited to look at this because our work is largely ethnographic where we see how different cultures are 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 coming in contact how these different cultures are taking shape now with this perspective if i read evans preachers ethnographic accounts of of the new era and I look at the relationship between the newer and their neighbors, Dinka, then I would find how the cultural aspects were coming together and how different forms of this culture were being, being created. I would sum up by saying that right from the beginning, we, the anthropologists, have been concerned with the, the multicultural studies we may not have used the term, and the fact that we did not use the term does not mean that the ideas were not there. In fact, I would go to the extent of saying that the genesis of the idea of multiculturalism can be traced to the anthropological writing. You can go to Franz Boas's work on the Eskimos, you can go to Cushman's account of the Zunis and you find nothing but 
the interaction between different cultures and new forms of culture coming up and a kind of uh, amity being created at the local level. We are all concerned with the peaceful living. All societies want to live together, though separately. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Srivastava, for, for this uh, you know, lecture of yours, which of course, as always, is a treat, is a feast, and uh, we all enjoyed it. I may not be you know, in a position to make any comment on your lecture, but then I would say that you underscored a very important point, and that is you talked about cultural rights which are embedded in culture, uh, in multiculturalism, and how dangerous this idea may be. And I think a critical, critical look at multiculturalism, you have uh, already pointed out with respect to women, children, animals, and others. I think, if I may uh, start by saying, you know, there could be two, again, you talked of two, two polar, you know, categories of uh, assimilationists, or what has been called variously as uh, melting pot and salad bowl. But I would, uh, I've always, you know, like uh, to these poles, I've always tried to give an Indian metaphor. And I had said I had replaced melting pot or assimilation with khichdi. You know, the khichdi, which is gruel, you know, we eat, uh, where you mix everything. And then you have, on the other hand, biryani. So, you know, this uh, multiculturalism, you know, on one hand, you have a khichdi where you try to mix everything into the mainstream. And on the other hand, you are having a concept of biryani on the other pole, where we are giving space to all the differences, all the different uh, spices, all the different ingredients. They have their they, their individual individuality, their their importance is reflected. So this is, but then at another level, I think there are two poles again. One pole is where the differences are not tolerated at all, where difference means that you need to die, you know, if you are different, you die. And we have seen that in Nazi time, you know, that xenophobic kind of an idea. On the other hand, you have cultures where it is tolerated, deeply tolerated. So within these two, again, as I said in the beginning, Within these two, again, poles where you don't tolerate differences and, in fact, you want to remove the differences, you want to destroy the differences. On the other hand, where you're welcoming. Finally, you know, like I would like to say that this multiculturalism culturalism is, an, is a Western concept. Of course, it is a Western concept and especially immersed with respect to the maybe blacks or minorities and other, other communities which are trying to make a living in the majoritarian groups. But then I think there has to be a uh, serious effort to understand Indian you know, writings, especially I would like to refer to Kabir, I'd like to refer to Guru Nanak, I like to refer to whole bhakti traditions in India, which actually was a kind of very vibrant tradition where multiculturalism was perhaps you know, debated, discussed and analyzed and I think uh, all those couplets, all those, you know, Guru Granth Sahib, or other religious texts you have in the Bhakti traditions, they were nothing but, I think, an exploration into multiculturalism. And that was a great Indian contribution. That also, I think, as anthropologists in India, we should try to look at. So with these words, I would like to thank uh, the organizers that they gave us, gave this opportunity to me to, to witness this historical lecture by Professor Vinay Kumar Srivastava. I thank the forum for that. Thank you very much. If uh, you allow me, Professor Joshi, I would like to say two things on this. The, the first uh, uh, idea about assimilation on one side, melting pot, khichdi, salad bowl on one side, where the where the, is, where the thought is that all cultures should become similar. The cultures should distance them from their individual characteristics and become a part of the dominant culture. After all, we cannot understand acculturation 
without bringing in the concept of power and without bringing in the distinction which was made at the time between active and passive cultures. That is very, very true. But what actually happened was that there was not even a single case of, of assimilation, complete assimilation. Cultures have always been, Joshi Saab, you know it, and we have done work on this together. Cultures have always been resilient. Cultures have come back with a great force. And they have said, no, we don't want this to, this to happen. Of course, some cultures suffer genocide. Of course, this has happened. A large number of the communities have disappeared from the face of the earth for, uh, for you know, the resilience of their culture and which refuse to be homogenized. Nevertheless, you find that complete assimilation has not occurred. Joshi Saab, incidentally, you know it, that I did some work on English witchcraft as a pre-PhD student. And what I found was that the pre-Christian traditions, which are sometimes called pagan tradition, they were kept alive by these people orally. Nothing was written down. No evidence should be left. So I know these traditions and you happen to be my child, I transmit it to, it to you. That is how these traditions were, were carried forward. And when the witchcraft law was repealed, they came up. But now they had a different form altogether. Now it was not black magic. It was rather white witchcraft, which is called Wiccan. So you find this kind of an extreme in which you find these types of things. Number two, the second thing. It's a very important point which you raised about the indigenous conceptions of plurality, indigenous concept, conceptions of diversity, and indigenous concepts of coexistence. You know, whether you take the work of, uh, of Sant Kabir, or you take, uh, uh, you know, uh, Goswami Tulsidas's Ram Charitmanas. In fact, I have been... <coughs> <clears throat> I've been telling some of my students that there can be an excellent research article on how tribes were conceptualized in Ram Charitamanas, how they were depicted, what kind of characteristics were attributed, uh, attributed to them. And I've been telling that some of you should take a project. I should not do everything. Hmm? And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, others should, should take up those who are interested, uh, interested in this. The problem is with the, our disciplines, which are is still embedded, which are still rooted in what is called positivism, this kind of a scientific kind of a thinking, where the canons of positivism are derived from the Western scholarship. Uh, uh, notwithstanding the fact that we know that we have our own indigenous scholarship, which is as potent and as powerful as, uh, as that particular tradition. The problem with us is that we are less careful to examine the corpus, the corpus of literature. How many anthropologists, Joshi Saab, you tell me, who have really read Kabir? from this particular point of view, that the kind of Indian culture should be. We know only at the superficial, uh, superficial level and not going deep uh, into this. After all, the Indian tradition, you very rightly said in the beginning, the Indian tradition right from the beginning has been a multicultural tradition. You find this multiculturality if you allow me to use this word, you find it in almost all the all the texts. I find, as I have been telling you know my student when I was a I was a teacher, as uh, as you know, I used to tell them that you should read Panchatantra, not because you will have a whole list of stories which you can tell your children and grandchildren. Not your children; your children will not listen to you, but your grandchildren will certainly listen to you. So. So Panchatantra gives a whole host of story, but more than that, 
it tells us about the biosphere. In fact, the idea of pluriverse, which has been so popularized by these post-development scholars, you find in Panchatantra. Therefore, one submission, if you allow me to extend your argument a little further, one of the things which we can, we can do is to promote anthropology of literature, the, the, the existing literature which is there. The focus on, Joshi Sahib, focus on fieldwork is so overarching that what we, we want is that the moment the student join, do six months of, uh, of uh, initial course and then go and do data collection. We have never asked the student to read some of these texts and some of the other texts, for example, Jatak Kahaniya, Jatak stories. Okay, or even the popular literature like uh, like uh, Vetal Bhattisi, Vetal Chobisi, or Tota Mena Kikasse. You know, they are a part of our folk literature and they also have their own social construction. In that way, we would be able to to bring two things together. Number one, the the empirical account based on fieldwork, and number two, the whole corpus of literature after Indian civilization was always a literate civilization. It was not uh, like other civilization. So that's a, that's a point which will come. And thus, my submission, which I have tried to put it as passionately as I, I could, my submission has been that uh, let us not forget our own roots. Dr. Gregory quoted the Mahatma, hmm? and Mahatma's statement is uh, very powerful that I would not allow my feet to be swept away from this. They rooted. And, you know, whichever concept comes, it is not just multiculturalism. The many other ideas which come, and I look into the anthropological writing. You know, my, my NK Bose Memorial Lecture, which I delivered in Guwahati, huh? and many Patacharya is here. It was, it was an argument that we talk about renunciation from the work of, uh, from the work of Dumont. And, uh, and uh, uh, we have uh, the other thing, see, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, please don't send the questions, you know, I, it really disturbs me. Eh? Please don't. Eh? Because I know the questions you're going to answer, and I'm not going to, I'm not in a position to answer all the questions, especially the question we Dr. Nita Mawar has asked. So, so what I'm saying is that we have to look at these diverse kind of, of traditions. So I argue that in the writings of Nirmal Kumar Bose, which were written much before Louis Dumas came to the scene. He spoke about renounce, renouncer as a man outside the system, as a man outside the caste system, and he becomes the harbinger of change. He becomes the prime mover of uh, of change. But the the uh, the uh, focus on the Western scholarship is to such an extent that we forget our own own root. In fact, as you know, I have always argued that we do not quote the work of our neighbor the person who is working in the next room. We would prefer to bring someone from Austria, from Belgium and quote his or her work rather than looking at. So when I quote uh, Professor P.C. Joshi in my, in my paper, it's not that I am honoring you, you are already honored, but because because I am, I am finding that here are my people who are doing this kind of a thing. You know, Joshi Saab, I am handling two journals social change and uh, journal of the anthropological survey of india and i have been told repeatedly by sage that please advise your author <coughs> to quote articles which have been published in social change and the journal of the anthropological survey of india we have to respect our own scholarship we have to respect our own culture thanks <coughs> Well, I think, uh, Professor Srivastava, you have said the right thing here. And this is, you know, like two things that you've made, you know, this is beyond multiculturalism. I think these are the agenda to be taken up by the forum. These are agenda to be taken up by all anthropologists in India. Unless and until we respect 
our own scholarship we will be only following the west and doing nothing i think the time has come and i and i when i try to do that i i really you know like discovered a lot in mm. medical anthropology when i when i went beyond i learned that people in 1910 had written a lot in 1910 whereas the medical anthropology in america came around 1956 57 so there is a lot that people have written there is a lot that people have written in anthropology but there is a lot that people have written in other other you know other areas of knowledge and we must know people with great insight have written now as far as the anthropology literature is concerned this is a great idea i think india is a country where people like to make po- write poems people like to write stories people like to tell stories this is the tradition of this country so anthropology of literature is something which i think we should look and i can only think of veena das when i look at anthropology of literature veena das has written on anthropology of literature even tn madan has written you know he look at indian films and on the basis of that film he wrote articles but not much of us not much of us got inspired by like professor vinay said that we are more obsessed by field work of course field work is very important for initiation as anthropologists but also there is lot that is written there is lot that people have written on the tribals you know tribal sony has written lot on tribals and there is a that is a perspective i remember there was a friend of ours in english department who was looking at writings on tribals by indian authors but has any anthropologist tried to do something like that i think we'll rarely find people but i think these are the areas which need we need to we need to i think explore uh, vinay ji yeah. i have i had got one question from professor papa rao and i would not ignore that question and uh, professor I, papa rao yeah. has uh, asked a question how do you relate multiculturalism with syncretism so honoring papa rao i ask you to uh, you know no, answer I, this question I, I, I just answer but before i i do so you know i suggested to professor deepak behra and this is about the forum this forum uh, uh, and he knows uh, uh, what um, what uh, views i have about this forum and how committed i am he knows about it my humble submission was that uh, whatever is done in this forum hmm, which of course is on the virtual platform all this i personally believe this must be published in one form or the other hmm? and there is no dearth of journals i have already suggested and i can uh, i can if uh, deepak ji permits me i can share with you that we are meeting again on the 30th of november i think am i right hmm. yes yes sir. on 30th of november i think we are going to have a very interesting discussion on indian anthropology dr gregory has suggested another topic and well uh, we thought that why indian anthropologists have remained ignored in our own country so whatever i mean the 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 topic is unimportant is basically looking at the predicament of anthropology in this uh, in, in this country and uh, we all have been concerned right from the very beginning about the state of anthropology and at the same time you see the the contradictory the contraposition is like this that anthropology is such a great uh, discipline when i read the writings of the others i often jump with joy because they have all made use of the anthropological ideas and have tried to understand you give the example of that english teacher you know this whole thing called cultural studies is nothing but uh, but anthropology such a vibrant such a great discipline and then look at the state of the anthropology department look at the state that how anthropology is systematically if you allow me to use this word ignored in a large number of institution is still the wounds of 2001 are still fresh because that was the time when anthropology was removed from indian science congress and was clubbed with the other subject and i repeatedly told the presidents after president i could never become a president i lost i could tell i told every president that please take up this issue is subject which is so important 
है एंड इट हैज बीन हैविंग इट्स ओन प्लेस इट्स ओन स्टेशन माई आर्ग्यूमेंट वॉज दैट यू फॉर दीज डिस लाइक मैनेजमेंट एंड साइकोलॉजी blah blah i mean i don't remember what they are you can have another forum but anthropology sanctity and anthropology identity this should not be abrogated this was my my point and i became so involved that i wrote letters after letters to the newspapers and they published it even newspapers who have been uh, who have not been uh, uh, publishing these kinds of thing like for example the statesman they published my letter but nothing nothing happened now this forum can provide a direction to the discipline to the institutions and the content and as i told professor deepak behra that on that day you know all the respected speakers who are supposed to give their ideas i have humbly submitted to him that each one writes a piece of say 1500 words or so that would become some kind of a poser some kind of a position position thing and the entire discussion we would tape record and the entire discussion we will form an article out of it which we would publish in the journal of the anthropological survey of india which you know i'm i i'm doing it and it will come immediately we'll include it immediately it has to be done at the earliest so this is what we'll do this no dearth of these journal i can request professor vijay sahai who is a very good friend of mine and he was also attending today's lecture to if the next thing come to that i can also request shubho ray you know for the journal of the anthropological society or the eastern anthropologists which i took care for almost 15 years or so 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 that these ideas in a very crystallized form they they come and i think it is very important professor deepak behra and professor gregory that such seminars are regularly held and you don't spend any money any money on this in case you have problem in doing it we will do it there is absolutely no uh, no no problem and in this way this forum will emerge as a very vibrant and very energized kind of a thing now coming to the question of multiculturalism and syncretism well um professor papa rao uh pardon me this time i will answer it some next time <laughs> uh, i mean this is a very uh, simplistic uh, kind of a thing i'll take it up some other time yeah any more question uh, with the kind permission of uh, chair professor joshi uh, i would like to respond to uh, professor vinay srivastav uh, thank you very much sir for your marvelous uh, gorgeous lecture i thoroughly enjoyed your uh, you know a uh, brainstorming lecture and you have given us a lot of inputs and uh, and thanks for uh, you know giving your valuable suggestion and uh, in fact we are working on that direction and uh, just a gentle reminder you have promised me to you know give a write up on little known indian anthropologists who have made enormous contribution to the subject and we will be very pleased to upload that to our website and once again uh, for the you know information of all our uh, participant please visit our web- website anthropologyindiaforum.com i repeat anthropology india forum it's a single no space in- anthropologyindiaforum.com and also uh, professor vinay ji i have already requested uh, all the you know panelist uh, You, you you will be the lead panelist and uh, the session will be moderated by professor kk K. misra and it, that is the upcoming event of this forum that is coming up on 30th november and uh, i request all the participant to spread the good gospel of this forum and uh, we want to make this forum vibrant we want to highlight the contribution of indian anthropologist and indian anthropologist uh, and we should try to reach out uh, Uh, anthropologist beyond india uh, overseas indian anthropologist and i have a plan also to invite some of the lead you know overseas anthropologist to the forum they have already agreed upon and we are planning to have a you know uh, again webinar and professor subha roy i requested him he has proposed me for a 
you know again symposium uh, that we are going to organize in the uh, i think 12th uh, december under the leadership of uh, professor papa rao he would be our moderator uh, and uh, biological anthropology in the 21st century uh, that is what uh, we are thinking we have not given final say no i mean sub discipline should be ignored so we are also thinking that biological anthropology should be involved and seven eight there would be panelists and that is our plan and please uh, thanks for giving us many valuable suggestion and i should fail in my duty if i don't extend thanks to both of you but uh, uh, may i request uh, professor salina meta uh, our vice president of the forum uh, to propose a vote of thanks uh, before shalina ji takes up uh, i'll just uh, like to share with you that uh, professor joshi and uh, professor nayak they are doing a book on 50 anthropologists and some of those 50 anthropologists are some of them are are of course from the point of view of uh, of um, the criteria they are lesser known and i think uh, bera sahab best thing will be to seek uh, the permission of professor pc joshi and yeah. some of those writers which are there on the lesser known anthropologists they can be given to given to you know the for their website in fact you know just to add here and i think professor shalina mehta pc joshi saab and of course neeta mawar and of course i i am here i can see all of them i think um, whatever i am today is because of two teachers of mine who may not be in the galaxy of uh, these uh, scholars they may not fall in the category of say nk bose surji sinha sc roy and other but they were great uh, great scholars jd mera was one and abhimanyu sharma was another one and uh, they taught me and even today when i am 67 years old and i attended their classes in 1969 70 71 each class is fresh in my mind and i can see them don't think i'm hallucinating i can see them coming i can see them talking i mean i can't imagine imagine the kind of magic they used to create in their in their respective uh, classes and i'm so beholden to them that today i always every morning i think that whatever i have been able to achieve is because of the knowledge which they distilled and they part part of, uh, uh, and they give it to a uh, joshi saab has done a great job bringing such people who may not occupy the galaxy of these scholars you see what happens in india hmm? it happens everywhere you talk about great anthropology they begin with some name and then they and then they stop huh? as if others are not doing anything i personally think and i can argue on this that some of the contemporary people they are doing better job than the people who were in the past but that is not the thing after all our teachers for our teachers you know they do. so perhaps that would be the great thing the second thing which i am i am doing along with professor pc joshi is on the 50 anthropologists who have and this is unfortunate eh? bera saab this is really unfortunate of course bera saab itishri shalina have written but there are people you know who are not writing i'm i'm requesting them again and again come on you have not to write on someone else you have to write on yourself hmm? why don't you sing your own pns why don't you sing your own 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 songs eh? and write about yourself in 3000 words or or so but you know the the worst thing is that uh, emails are not answered i don't know god knows that uh, what these people are, are are busy in i mean there can't be a person busier than joshi and i uh, you know every time you know the office is sitting in in left hemisphere is office right hemisphere is family uh, and and other things and that is how we have to we have to navigate so please you know this is my humble submission that uh, we all have to work uh, work together as i see if someone were to write a history of this forum then would say how this has evolved it has started as a chance group the forum started as a chance group it started as an accidental group 
it was some issue which brought us together now that issue has gone to the to the back seat for the time being has gone to the back seat and other pertinent and important issues have come it's a great thing that 100 people attended uh, uh, today's uh, today's lecture isn't it great and hundreds of people may be attending the uh, the facebook uh, kind of a thing. So what happens, see, the latent function of all this is that anthropology comes to the public consciousness. And so Roseberry would be proved to be wrong, who said that anthropologists are publicly invisible. No, they are not. So the entire kudos goes to Berasa, goes to Gregory, goes to Joshi, and goes to uh, uh, Mutatkar Saab, goes to P.K. Mishra Saab. I mean, they have all contributed uh, contributed to this, to the coming of a very vibrant thing. And God willing, it will continue. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, before, you know, Professor Salina made a proposed vote of thanks, I would like to make a request. All the members of the Governing Council are requested to stay back for 10 minutes. Uh, to have some discussion. Professor Salina Mehta, may I request you to propose what? Well, <laughs> it's, a, it's a mammoth task, Vinay. Um, I, I'm sorry, I just can't refer to you as Professor Vinay Srivastava. You will always remain Vinay and Joshi would always remain PC. Uh, so yeah, my, uh, I'm still recovering. I have zillions of questions to put across. But uh, I thought uh, we were going to give this platform to certain younger people to pose those questions to you. I only have to add one sentence, and that is that anthropologists are actually practicing multiculturalist. You've persistently referred to Franz Boas. He was one of the first to challenge apartheid in the United States. And that, I think, in itself was a reflection of the fact uh, that uh, there is something much beyond this whole notion of melting pot. And then Nathan Glazer themselves, they challenged this notion. And they wrote a book called Beyond the Melting Pot. So anthropologists as practicing multiculturalists have had an enormous role to play. And I think each one of us, when we went to different communities, uh, we had a very, very different perspective about that. We did not carry those biases. We did not carry those prejudices. We put them aside. And that in itself was a great and a major achievement. I entirely agree with both of you. Indian anthropology has to come of age. It has been there for too long, has been somehow for whatever reasons. And I think as mm, teachers, as practicing anthropologists for the last 40 odd years, many of us have to take the responsibility and onus that possibly we were guilty somewhere. So I'm sure when we have the meeting on 30th, we'll have uh, a platform to discuss this. Let me do my humble responsibility of actually saying thank you to Joshi Saab for, gave, you know, for finding time, sitting in his car, taking the call <laughs> to preside over this lecture. Um, I can understand the kind of responsibilities he has and what I keep reading in the newspapers. I'm sure he's passing through some very, very difficult phase, but knowing him, I know he'll be much, much stronger. Vinay is a great champion of anthropology and we are so fortunate to have him at the Anthropological Survey of India, which has already acquired a new character. So thank you so much for being part of our humble effort this United Forum of Anthropology is wanting to make an effort, wanting to make an impression that we have no ulterior motives. Our only motive is to promote and promote and promote Indian anthropology in its totality. So thanks once again, Professor Srivastava, uh, for doing this. And many, many thanks to Professor Deepak Bera, Professor Gregory, Professor Ota, many other members of the Governing Council who've been working tirelessly uh, through day and night to bring this platform, to energize this platform and not to forget Praveen, without whose efforts this forum would not have been as vibrant as it is becoming gradually. And I wish it all the best. And thanks once again, uh, Deepak and Vinay 
and Joshi Saab. All of you are probably years younger to me. So I have the right to address each one of you by your names um, and to say, please keep it alive. Please keep it going. Younger people need a voice. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, uh, Salina, for proposing a vote of thanks. And I request uh, all the members of the governing council, I don't know how many are still present, to stay back for uh, 10 minutes. And uh, we want to have a small discussion, you know. Uh, other members are requested to leave. Thank you very yeah. much. Uh, sir, uh, sir, uh, sir, before uh, Shivatsa sir leave, so I would like to request one thing. Uh, may I, sir, please? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I, uh, like, it was nice to know that uh, like both the great anthropologists of this country are uh, working on a on a book like uh, less known anthropologist. So, sir also mentioned that some people are not even responding to email or they should write something like that. My humble request is uh, if if uh, they allow like if seniors allow like we younger people also like to contribute like maybe like that if any chances are there so on behalf of all young faculties and, and an anthropologist I, I i request uh maybe i beg for uh the opportunity uh, to contribute in the book uh, thank you sir yeah uh, thank you praveen and uh, uh you well my answer my answer to this is that uh, please, uh, please make your own effort. We are there to facilitate it. You come out with the book and we'll see to it that it is published from uh, one of the best uh, publishers. Um, this is for you to, you to do it. And don't expect uh, Joshi or uh, Nayak or Deepak or I to, to do it. You know? Take up the lead and organize. Huh? I, in fact, I tell you, I'm never happy with this term called young anthropologist because I think that's not a correct uh, designation. But you can always think of the people who have not been covered in these two books, the books which Joshi and Nayak are doing and which Joshi and I are doing, which are not covered. You can always start and take the lead. You should be a leader. You know, We should not be there to, uh, to hold you by finger and taking you. Don't uh, be tied to our appearance. Huh? So start it. Do it. Do it uh, uh, yourself. Think of uh, the the people you have in mind, young and budding anthropologists. Although I told you, I never had, I'm not happy with these two terms. And come out with some kind of a thing. You can write to us. You know where we can be of some help to you. Where Deepa, Joshi, and I can be help to you, or Gregory can be help to you, is to get it published. And I will go through it. I'll make all the corrections, all the additions which have to be done. And uh, I will, we will work as a facilitator, okay? So you take the lead. And now, uh, don't throw the things to us. You do it. There's a bad approach. There's a bad <laughs> approach. You do it. I have done my job, you know? Now, don't expect me to do everything. So uh, it's, it's not like this. Do it. <laughs> do it yourself. <laughs> no, sir, thank you, sir. We will do it, sir. We will do it, sir. Thank you, sir. Praminji, right. I would like to respond to you. You know, sure, we are also planning to organize a webinar where uh, boarding anthropologist, uh, I don't find a substitution for that. Uh, uh, Binazi doesn't like the term either boarding or young. And I don't find a third word for that. Anyway, I would be comfortable with boarding anthropologist. And then uh, the seasoned anthropologist will be the participant. They would listen and comment. So that session is going to take place in the month of December. Maybe towards the end of... Uh, December, we'll organize a session where uh, the moderator would be also a boarding anthropologist and all the panelists would be also boarding anthropologists. We'll have a symposium like that. And uh, you, you know, float a proposal. No, it's not like spoon feeding. We'll set everything and uh, you come and uh, attend it. So you bring out to come out with a new idea and uh, the Google Meet platform will be yours, will be yours. And we are will be very pleased to listen to you and i think uh, that is that will be a very good beginning 
And if I may add, take just one area on which other people should talk, not like uh, uh, like each person is talking about a different thing. I mean, it can be a theme. It can be can be can be an issue. I mean, this is one of the important issues in that how anthropology can help us in creating a tolerant society. I mean, this itself. And let there be uh, ten uh, speakers. Yeah. who in uh, Deepak Behra's language are young and budding speakers, they come and uh, they give their, their presentation. <coughs> Let us listen to <coughs> yeah. listen, listen to you. Right? Some of the old texts can be re-examined, like teaching of anthropology, which was done by David Mendelbaum at one time. It is very good. I mean, this argument which I said in the beginning, that how anthropology, in a very silent manner, anthropology creates vibrations in you. You are totally transformed. You just look into yourself. You know, when I look into myself and I find myself very tolerant, very pluralistic, very syncretic, very multicultural, huh? I think that the contribution has been made not by any other thing except by anthropology which I read, read about others, and how reading about the others was instrumental in shaping the... You know, myself. I don't believe in this distinction between physical and social anthropology, because I think, and I've argued again and again, that physical anthropology and social anthropology are both concerned with human being. A biological and genetic aspect is one reality. Cultural and social aspect is the other reality. And then there are... There are political factors, this whole political economy, political economy of health, political economy of, uh, of body. You know, everything is, uh, is, 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 in, is in this framework. So just demolish this distinction, anthropology as one discipline, think about it and come out with a viable proposal. And it should be done, you know, as a senior man, I can tell you, it should be done, you know, with great preparation. You see, even when I have to give a lecture of 45 minutes or one hour, I do a job for at least 20 hours. It should be some kind of a thought out thing, prepared thing. It should not be off the cuff. They just go and, uh, and do it. No, not at all. So, and this will be excellent. Now, Deepak ji, may I leave or do you want me to stay? No, no, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much. I have sir. an idea for you. I have yeah. an idea for you. Uh, there is a lot of work going on in the area of artificial intelligence and anthropology. Now that you've been working on this, because there is somebody I know, an anthropologist, who's uh, in Singapore at the moment and is running um, at least a million dollar industry using anthropology and artificial intelligence. So those are the areas that I think younger generation should be exploring. And by all means, if you have any ideas about it, go ahead and do it. Yeah. Thanks, Salina, for... Uh, Thank, you, ma Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank sir, you. I have uh, one line to say to Vinay, sir. Uh, can I, sir? Uh, sir, Namaskar. It is uh, namaskar, namaskar, Namaskar. Sir, uh, I had mailed you regarding this uh, 3,000 3, words for anthropologists, and you promised me to send one sample for... Uh, following a particular pattern. I am yet to receive that. That's why I couldn't send you. Uh, so if you please uh, send me that sample, that what pattern I have to follow to uh, write for the particular item of 3,000 3, words. Uh, you promised me to send one sample of uh, writing so that uh, I could follow that, that particular pattern. And But I am yet to receive that. That's why. Uh, sir, you can okay. unmute your... Sir, okay. please unmute. Okay, Tisri, thank you very much. Uh, you can make this communication at a personal level. Uh, okay. And uh, now, now, thank you, Binazi. Good night, because uh, you have some other work. And uh, uh, may I request uh, uh, the members of uh, governing council to step back. I can see some of the members. And uh, uh, Professor, uh, uh, sorry, Praveen wanted to share Praveen, some of the ideas. Praveen, please, you wanted to are some of your idea please Praveen. sir yeah Praveen. yeah uh professor actually our uh, uh, seo process uh, successfully done now it can be you know our website is searchable on google like 
no need of waiting for a link if they just type uh, anthropology forum india or, or india anthropology forum something like whatever they 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 have they can search now our website is on okay that's a great news yeah, yeah. so anybody can now uh, thanks you know, begin and congratulations to you for that <laughs> thank you ma'am thank you ma'am yeah uh, many many congratulations yeah and yeah and i also want to mention one more thing uh, it is about uh, anyway just now we completed uh, two uh, two grand uh, lectures we have lot more to do maybe uh, we can like if we have uh, uh, proper our own uh, way of conducting this in all the events like maybe uh, like whatever platform like google platform or microsoft platform anything so that would be better uh, even today is also uh, there was a problem uh, yeah yeah uh, i know that yeah. robin because only you know we wanted to record uh, yes yes sir yes sir that is yeah, why we me... record only 100 uh, participants could join and yeah. some some of, of course they joined uh, the facebook but again there was some problem but anyway yeah, yeah. the whole lecture has been recorded yeah, and yeah, yeah. we'll put it in our uh, you know it will be uploaded to our website and also yeah. we'll uh, you know uh, yeah. put it in youtube so that yeah. uh, those who miss the lecture uh, you know can again get an opportunity to listen to professor vinay srivastava yeah, yeah actually i i explained sir like how it will be i i i explained uh, professor deepak bara sir like what are the limitations of free usage and all so then sir said uh, he'll be asking his uh, you know office people to do it but what i feel every time maybe uh, like like i don't know how to say this to the the, the members like i don't have any other options uh, you know other than telling this like at least we should have our own uh, thing like uh, anyway we don't have g suit now if we have g suit we could also you know record or else like i am using my university thing like uh, microsoft it has uh, you know a lot of uh, scope to even join and all i can use uh, from my uh, uh, university resources if anybody else uh, are having access like this even even to google meet also not necessarily microsoft that i have that access so i can uh, yeah, like we can use that any time so like this is okay, i think okay. i conveyed that it's a number of participants uh, more number of participants should be allowed for live uh, uh, lecture to listen to live okay, lecture no, tomorrow you know we need 200 we will, no sir listen tomorrow will uh, you know uh, do little bit of editing and again put it uh, in facebook and also in youtube uh, that we are going to and will it, it will also be uploaded to our website so those who miss the lecture could get a chance to you know listen to professor binay ji and now uh, i would like to know about the development of the registration professor that is what i was about to say i thought that Your Your Lord, give me a minute even to speak. No, 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 please. <laughs> good news. I'm, I'm, I'm saying good news. Gregory is also, you know, waiting for that and Professor Josie. Uh, so, uh, you know, it was uh, applied today. Oh, great! And you have given me thirtieth. You have given me thirtieth. <laughs> I tell you, much before thirtieth, the oh. certificate will be displayed. Oh, uh, great! Great. <laughs> so, on behalf of the forum, I would like to extend. No, no, uh, legend. I have, I have told you. To no, no, I have. Opa. Deepak, Deepak, I have already told you. Please thank me on that day when the certificate will be at your disposal. <laughs> that Don't tell me before that. But yeah. it will be certainly. It will happen certainly before thirtieth. Is there any bottleneck problem, Professor Ota, for the registration? Uh, Is so, there any uh, bottleneck for, problem? For, Forget about bottle line. There is a neck, and that neck will be given to you before thirty. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Don't worry. Don't worry for that. And uh, uh, you know, Professor Bera. Yeah, please. Professor Bera. Yeah. 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 Actually, uh, uh, well, that's great. You know, Ota Sahab is always there to give us all good news. Always. 
but uh, i i like to go back to parveen you know parveen is making his hesitant but i think what parveen is telling us is that you know we have to buy some of these packages yeah. and they are not very costly for example if you want Absolutely. to have zoom if you have want to have zoom zoom can be bought and we why not you know we can have our own access to why i my university has lot of these g suits and all those things but why should we use institutional you know for our work i think we should we should be in a position to buy these things and uh, we can support uh, praveen to buy them they are not very costly so whatever uh, forum we whatever uh, you know uh, medium we want to buy whether it is zoom or google or whatever i think uh, if zoom we buy zoom with 8 9000 rupees for a month or so we can have 1000 we can host 1000 people so you know like that's the kind of capacities that can no, be there uh, in free uh, there is a limited uh, no no professor yeah. joshi thank you very much i think my Uh, system analyst is there subrat 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 are you there subrat ji he can tell us so how much yes sir i am here ha uh, subrat uh, what would be the cost actually sir uh, gmail actually google has restricted now during lockdown it is allowing uh, it was allowing around 251 users but now it has restricted to 100 users but that you didn't uh, tell so... me But, you know had i known the fact yeah, that actually that I, i was also on a one <laughs> today actually i got to know it and what? i have informed you by by whatsapp at 6 pm but no, 6 uh, somehow no. you are busy otherwise that was too yes. late had i known that <laughs> fact, i would have gone for uh, microsoft team anyway do you have any idea how much uh, we have to pay to subscribe sir uh, i have to look into the gmail pricing or microsoft pricing I have okay. not gone through it. Yeah, even Pravin. Okay, thank, thanks, thanks, uh, uh, Pravin. You please uh, search what Professor Joshi is suggesting. That is quite sensible. So let us have our own uh, uh, package, so that uh, uh, we we are not dependent. Uh, yeah, sir. Actually, uh, you know, as per my yeah, homework on this, uh, as per my homework on this. May yeah. I request yeah. to mute others? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, you know, as per my uh, homework, sir. Actually, even I mentioned that, sir, uh, during our uh, conversation. Oh, yeah. Like there is different <laughs> levels. Like only hundred members will be allowed. That's why I I I didn't go for it. Like maybe buying G suit also, uh, not uh, going to serve our uh, uh, thing. maybe what i suggest maybe uh, maybe for uh, you know uh, for, for for further maybe 2 3 months 4 months maybe a little for little time we can use uh, our like microsoft team we can very much uh, you know uh, give trial to all the speakers like if they if people don't know we can ask them to join first and we can train them so in in microsoft what? version what happens See, in Pravin. Microsoft, hey, Pravin. <coughs> uh, let let us again switch over to Microsoft team. I don't know. Uh, we are going to be scolded by <laughs> our members because frequently we are changing, you know. But uh, maybe May if uh, the you know if the actual uh, discussion will start from six thirty, we'll request all the members to join us by six o'clock. And those member who will struggle, and we'll lend them support so that. Uh, we get all the members by 6:30 and then start the business session yeah, yeah sir so one more thing one more thing is there sir actually see like when they click on the link it is not the problem with link actually with the same link many other can join like maybe uh, their system may be running for long time like i request people to try one more time try two times it's not a problem like whatever link anyway it is the same thing but with microsoft link uh, the the point is we can have even longer meetings okay. longer meetings there is no, no time pravin sir may i speak sir pravin even yes, zoom sir. has a long uh, even zoom also allows mm -hmm. for longer time for yes, more sir. people i mean as many as 1000 and i i sent you one uh, link uh, pravin yes. 
for one year we can bargain and uh, have a negotiation on uh, for at least for one year they will yeah. host they will uh, uh, i mean uh, give a reminder and they will do everything with unlimited yeah. time with unlimited so uh, why don't you go for that at least you yeah, talk i have yeah. a word of caution for that you. can be done ma'am actually here uh, uh, my point was uh, i have a word of caution for zoom because all the reports and i have two international security experts at home with me both my children uh, so before you uh, you know the government of india may just ban it any time yeah yeah we should do it immediately before that happens uh, please let us not uh, get into a platform which we know is not very very secure because there are lots and lots of reports about it so please explore i'm sure whether it is google meet or microsoft uh, we have to pay for more people vinay is already doing it he's paying for 250 people and he pays something like 13000 or so now as members of the governing council i'm willing to contribute whatever is required from me at any time you just have to tell us how much money is required and as professor joshi has already said it uh, we know nothing comes for free So, if Google is allowing us for a hundred people for free, fine. If they want us to pay for two fifty people, we should go ahead either for Microsoft or Google. Please take your call. Yeah. Uh, thanks yeah. for making uh, uh, one point which I wanted to make on the security issue, and uh, I also thank that you mentioned that you are, you know, happily ready to contribute for this. Like, uh, but my point here is like uh, for a, for some months. I am telling for some months. Anyway, as of now, we are not collecting any money. So my idea is, yeah, like until we collect money, our forum uh, have enough money to buy things. Till that time, we'll try to have. Uh, uh, we we tr we'll try try to use other things. Like, see, I am using uh, like my university has given me is <coughs> a corporate. <coughs> So until that mine or or some other things we can use. Once we have money with us in our forum, maybe with the uh, in terms of registration or, or in terms of uh, anything else, we can go for buying. Like so no, that Prabin, is not my idea. But Robin, I yeah. I slightly disagree with you because uh, you know this thirteen thousand, fourteen thousand. It's not a big money, and yeah. there are many willing member who are ready to contribute. Oh yeah, so, we are in the country. Just you know, you have to make exploration. In between, one uh, member has joined our forum. He is Sankar, uh, Doctor Sankar. He is very technically, he is very sound, and recently yes. has joined. And he is a student of Professor Papa Rao. I don't know yes. if the Professor Papa Rao is here. So people like uh, Doctor Sankar, Doctor Praveen, and maybe few other person. they can uh, have a discussion and uh, recommend us uh, a particular uh, you know package and we will definitely go for it and money is not a big problem and i am sure there are people who would be very we will contribute yeah, yeah. 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 so provide so, so, like exploration and let us know how much you have to spend for that okay yes yes sir yes sir show sure, some and okay. uh, i think uh, enough is enough and uh, i thank everyone and uh, we all enjoyed and this lecture those who missed the lecture please tell your friends that uh, it would be uploaded and we have a professor grigory he is very good you need not have to you know if you have missed the lecture if you read professor grigory summary that is more than enough so again he i have requested him to prepare a summary of the whole lecture and that will be posted maybe within a couple of days but uh, definitely we'll upload this entire lecture to our website and uh, it will also be posted in facebook and other social media platform thank you very much yeah. good night sir 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 one second sir one second sir like uh, yeah. before uh, sending it to uh, a facebook i request uh, uh, first to upload in youtube then yeah. that link into Uh, uh facebook so that will actually help us to why simultaneously we cannot do that both facebook and youtube Prabhi? no ma'am no, no, no actually like if it goes on facebook okay, again again my you know, uh, my you know system analyst uh, if he is there i think so he must be there because that is why 
we are here uh, yes, we, we can do simultaneously but need manpower for facebook live we need to set one manpower for google meet or microsoft we need to set one manpower and for youtube uh, simultaneously we need to set one manpower because we are sharing the screen no no right? what and so when no, no. this uh, when this no, sir, what i said sir actually what i said just a minute just a minute just a minute uh, subrat when I, this yes. lecture will be ready for uploading when yes, are yes. you to edit it uh, hey, we will do some editation then uh, editing, the editing yes. will be over by couple of days time uh, within one day sir within one day thank you so after you do the editing please uh, upload it both in youtube and the facebook okay yes sir. yes i will share the link also to grigiri sir and to you okay thank you very much okay 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 the meeting is over namaskar professor joshi sir salina ji thank you sir everyone namaskar thank you pravin bye bye sir bye sir bye sir bye pravin thank you thank you thank you subrat ji thank you so much subrat subrat yes sir and uh, our atul ji thank you on behalf of the forum i would like to extend my thanks thank you good night to all good night good night good night ma'am good night good night sir so with the permission of governing council i'll put a personal post on uh, whatsapp group uh, so please go through my invitation thank you so much okay <laughs> thank you good night everyone good night good night everyone bye